Hello students, today we will start with your chapter electric city, electricity for your class 10 that is electric current. Before starting with the term electric current, we need to start with some basic uh, terms. Right? What are those basic terms? First term is charge. You need to be familiar with this part. You have heard about atom. Atom is the very smallest or the tiniest particle of any substance, right? The constituent of any substance, the smallest or tiniest constituent of any substance is called as atom. What does the atom consist of? The atom consists of protons, neutrons and electrons. Out of which these are in a bounded state in the nucleus of an atom, right? And this is in a free state in orbits. That is, it is free to move in orbits. What do you mean by the term charge? Whenever there is an interaction between two atoms, or you can say two bodies. Suppose, when I am rubbing this hand, this is one body and this is another body. It consists of different type of atoms. It, consists, it may consist of different type of atoms, right? They can be same, they can be different atoms also. Now, when these two comes in contact with each other and I will rub them, I will experience a heat between them due to what we say as friction, which we have already studied in the previous class. This heat is a form of energy. And what do you mean by energy? Energy here means whenever there is an interaction between two bodies, an atom at higher energy level and there is an atom at lower energy level. So to balance the energy levels of the two atoms, of the two contact bodies, energy from higher body will need to transfer to the lower body. And how this energy will be transferred? This energy will be transferred in quantities of mass. And that quantity which consists of mass to transfer in the form of energy to transfer energy from one point to another is basically called as charge. That is why protons have charge positive, electrons have charge negative. You can understand here that they are mass, they are quantities containing mass, right? Neutron is also having a mass, but it is neutral because the number of protons and electrons have the same amount they are concentrated in and hence they cancel the effect. That is why a neutron, it is also a type of charge, but it becomes neutral, that is its effect becomes neutral because positive and negative cancels out each other. Correct? So, whenever a, a body at higher energy comes in contact with a body at lower energy and they are having a transfer of energy from one side to another, this transfer of energy takes place in the form of free electrons and these free electrons the transfer of mass in the form of energy to transfer energy from higher to lower part is in the form of particle called as charge and this charge can be positive and negative in other words you can say Whenever there is a transfer of energy in the form of mass from one body to another body, there is a property of any matter or any object or any particular substance due to which it will experience a force when it will come in contact with the other body. Agar aap kisi bhi do cheezo ko rub karenge, so, this force is the force that is the energy developed and the energy is higher and lower which is the heat of the heat form mein ho rahi hai. and that energy, that transfer of energy takes place in the form of mass that is called as your charge. Understood? Now, we have learned about this charge now we need to learn about current we need to learn about voltage and we need to learn about potential. So, 
I'll explain you all these things. Basic thing is, in which part materials does this charge exist and in which it does not exist. So that there are two kinds of material, one is conductors and the other ones are insulators. These have free charge that is free electrons. We are always talking charge in respect of electrons because they are not capable of moving, only they are capable of moving from one body to another body. Right? So the materials which has free charge are called as conductors and the materials which do not have free charge or they do not allow the movement of charge is called as insulators. I hope this is clear. So every metal is a conductor because they have free electrons or free charge you can say. Why wood, plastic, they do not have this. Uh, free charges inside them and they do not allow the free charge to move from one point to another point of their body and they are called as insulators. Correct? Now, with the help of an analogy, I will try to explain you the basic difference between a voltage and a current. And you can also try to learn about potential difference voltage and current through that analogy. Let me explain it to you. <coughs> If we will now see, if we rub the foot of a person to a rug, right, then you can see the charges are accumulating. As soon as these charges are accumulating, when they become higher and higher, they starts to split up in the human body. When they start to split up in the human body and the human body is experiences now uh, some kind of force. When the force, the force is higher when the distance between a metallic contact and a human body becomes lower, the force becomes higher. And if the force is already higher, the distance can be very, very small. So due to this charge movement in the body of the person, since we have rubbed the body of a person to this rug, the particles have been transferred. There is a transfer of heat energy due to which the charges have accumulated. So that means charge is the basic property of matter due to which it experiences an electric force and hence it results in the continuous discharge of electric current. Due to this charge, we can see when the person hand comes nearer to the metal contact of this door. You can see it here. As soon as it, as it comes nearer, the charges starts to flow towards the metallic contact because always the charge flows from higher accumulation portion to the lower accumulation portion that is from higher uh, region to the lower region. So as soon as the distance becomes smaller, the force of attraction between the metallic contact and the charges becomes higher. You can see it here and this charge particles begins to transfer. You will see when the charges are in motion, there is a generation of an electric spark which is denoted by this blue line if you can see it here, right? That means this blue line indicates the electric current. So what we are talking about is whenever there is a property of a matter which comes due to transfer of energy between two uh, between motion or contact of the two bodies the charge accumulation the charge begins to build up on one body and begins to lose from the other body due to this motion when the charge begins to build up the accumulation of charge at one point causes the potential energy to be higher which we term as potential difference and to carry this potential to the, from higher point to the lower point we need some external force or external energy external work to be done which we term as potential if we are not knowing the source of point to the point where it comes off and if we are knowing both the source and the receiving point it is called as potential difference which we also called as voltage so for now we are discussing about the charge so charge was the basic property of a matter which 
enables it to experience enables any body on which it is on which the charge is present it enables that body or that matter or that object to experience a force in some given electric or electromagnetic field now we can say here let us suppose we have a pump and a motor system uh, the, with the help of which we are actually giving a water supply to a turbine and we have a pump as an external force this pump can be easily analogized or can be considered similar to an external battery that we use to give electric current to a circuit and this turbine on which we are actually making use of the energy that is this will run through this water supply of the given output by the pump here we are using this electrical shaft to run on the basis of this battery only so they both are analogous system you can see here that there is a difference between difference of pressure the pressure difference is maintained by the pump between the two sides of the valve if you can see here and is like it is prevented it to from this side to for, from water to flow from this side to this side here also due to this switch being open it does not allow the movement of charges that is electrons to pass from one side of the switch to the other side so that is also the difference between the electrical states of the two sides of the switch so that difference is called as potential difference now when we'll start the supply we can assume that what will happen the pump it has two sides one at the higher and the other at lower that is input and the output so this is the output of the pump and this is the input of the pump now it is the pump that generates the pressure difference between the input and the output and here also it is the battery that is generating a electrical level difference that is the level of potential difference the level of main potential higher or lower states from its positive and negative ends because a battery consists of a positive and a negative end so positive terminal and negative terminal has the difference in their electric levels in the concentration level of the charges and hence they are called as potential difference levels so here the battery is maintaining the potential difference level and now when the water it actually does not circulate right still now it is not circulating because this valve is actually preventing but since the switch is open this valve is preventing it is not allowing the water to flow but here in the complete pipe the water is actually present and here also in the complete electrical wiring you can see the charges because they are conductors the charges are always present but they are not in movement so to move the charges you require an external force from either this battery or either this electric pump this external force causes the movement which is called as your external work done which is given by the term called as potential difference or you can say voltage and this movement this force when will cause the movement of the charge carriers inside the electric circuit inside the wires they will constitute the term which we say as current so every wire every metal has the free charge carrier that is electrons inside it but they are not in actual motion in the conductor free state but whenever an external force is applied on that conductor the force on of that external force the force of that external object is so considering here it as what we say in the electric circuit as battery or the electrical source will force the charges or the free electrons to move from one side to another and that will constitute the movement of that charges will be constitute as a current so as soon as we the uh, the switch is closed 
the current flows from positive level to the higher level as the water flows from higher pressure to the lower pressure through the turbine is it understood and your uh, machinery or your uh, output uh, you can say your uh, output object begins to work correct now there is no level in no difference in the pressure between the two sides of the valve which are now acting as a pipe and here also there is no level of concentration difference of the charge carriers so the voltage is having there is no voltage difference between the two sides of the switch the voltage difference lies from of this positive terminal and this negative terminal only so electric current start to flow but there is always a potential difference between these two sides of the battery and between these input and output sides of the pump but it is somewhat less so this same pressure difference at the input output side of the your uh, pump is actually generated at the sides of the turbine this this side and this side and here it is generated at the sides of your electrical shaft correct i hope this makes easier for you so now we can understand that with the levels of the pressure difference of the uh, you can say uh, analogy that is being considered here with the water pump and with that of electric circuit can be easily understood so we are talking about current now what is current if this is your conductor conductor will have free electrons but they will not be moving they will be at rest initially when this conductor is attached to an external force giving object that is you can say a battery or a cell this is the positive terminal of the cell and this is the negative terminal the cell is basically the source of external work done or external energy or external force that it will apply on these electrons of your conductor by generating a field across it now how does the cell generate it between the two terminals in there are two terminals of a cell one is positive and the other one is negative between the two terminals of a cell there is always a concentration difference of the charge carriers between the two uh, ends of the cell that means the end or the or the point where the concentration will be higher will be termed as the positive terminal and the point where it will be lower will be called as the negative terminal so due to the concentration or the level difference that we have already understood by the analogy of electric pump the pressure difference is called as the potential difference here the potential difference is maintained to compensate for this potential difference this cell will be executing an electric field at this two points so this will be positive due to this particular terminal and this will be negative due always the electric field flows from positive terminal to the negative terminal or you can say from higher concentration level to the lower concentration level so all these electrons will be attracted towards this side and since the electrons are having a negative charge the current always flows that is the difference always flows from higher to lower so that means the charges will be the free electron charges will be attracted towards the positive terminal of the conductor and the current that is the difference level maintenance force it will be traveling from positive to negative so the current will travel in this direction current is actually at rest of time of a conductor right when the conductor is not being attached to an external cell or a battery or an external source the conductor's charges are at rest when they are at rest that means there will be no flow of charge carriers but when you apply an external force the charge carriers will move agar aapke upar aap yahan khade hain और सडनली पीछे से किसी ने आपको एक्सटर्नली फोर्स लगा के धक्का दिया तो आप मूव करेंगे जो आप मूवमेंट दिखा रहे हैं वो मूवमेंट ही विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम 
कि एक पर्टिकुलर सेकेंड में कितने चार्जेस एक साथ फ्लो कर रहे हैं दैट इज कॉल एस करंट द रेट ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ चार्ज रेट मीन्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम एंड फ्लो ऑफ चार्ज मीन्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एयर सो हाउ मच इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर ट्रेवलिंग इन वन सेकेंड ऑफ टाइम फ्रॉम दिस एंड ऑफ द कंडक्टर टू दिस एंड ऑफ द कंडक्टर इज कॉल्ड एज करंट एंड करंट ऑलवेज फ्लोस फ्रॉम पॉजिटिव दैट इज हायर एंड to negative that is lower end of your cell that is the direction of current will be in this direction i hope this is understood now when you are talking about the current this current was actually caused by the movement of charge carriers and the movement of charge carriers was basically due to the level of concentration difference maintained by the external source between its two ends the higher concentration level will be called as positive and the lower concentration level will be called as negative terminal of that source what do you mean by this concentration level for any amount of charge carrier to be transferred from this point higher to completing the full circuit and then come to the negative terminal for any amount of charge transfer you will require an energy that energy is worked on that is why you were feeling heat heat is also a form of energy that is an energy need to be applied for any movement of the charge carriers that is to constitute current you require movement of charge carriers and movement of charge carriers is due to the your external energy so amount of work done or you can say energy applied to move a charge carrier to move a charge from one place to another is called as potential difference and this potential difference will act, act as an external force and that external force will now be your this external force will now act as a field for your conductor which will apply on this electrons of these three charge carriers of the conductor and hence they will start to move then they will uh, constitute current understood to external force lagane ke liye hame ek source chahiye hota hai wo source hame kyun milta hai kyunki uske dono ends ke andar जो लेवल ऑफ कंसेंट्रेशन है कहीं पे ज्यादा है और कहीं पे कम है चार्ज कैरियर्स की और उस लेवल ऑफ कंसेंट्रेशन के कारण उसके अंदर एक एनर्जी डेवलप होती है जो उससे बाहर की तरफ एक फोर्स लगवाती है और वो फोर्स कंडक्टर के अंदर बिल्ड होके चार्ज कैरियर्स जो उसके अंदर है उनको मूव कराती है जिससे क्या बनता है करंट अंडरस्टूड सो एक्चुअली मेन द फोर्स इज गिवन बाय द एक्सटर्नल सोर्स and it is applied on the free charge carriers of your conductors due to movement of which free charge carriers in the conductors the current is developed and current is actually q by t now one thing is you need to remember in a particular straight line conductor the current actually remains same at all points you can also do it by a demonstration which i'll show you the current will remain same and the two terminals of the battery or the cell will give you a potential difference if you consider this terminal as zero that is no charges are present no concentration of charges are present here and this as somewhat we can say 5 or 9 or 3 then the level of concentration difference will be if they have plus 9 and 0 then the difference becomes 9 that will be called as 9 volt which means 9 volt means you will need 9 joule of energy to be transferred by 1 coulomb of charge coulomb is the unit of charge volt is the unit of potential difference and energy that is worked on joule 
is the unit of your work or energy that you are applying. Understood? That means अगर ये 9 volt की cell है आपके बाजार से जब आप market से when you are buying a pencil cell or let us suppose a heavy cell, let us suppose it is of 9 volts. When you are buying a 9 volt cell, that means out of that 9 volt, each single charge carrier that is one coulomb charge. And you must remember for one coulomb of charge. You need to have six, approximately 6.2 into 10 power 18 number of electrons. That means to constitute 9 volt, these much electrons will be carrying an energy of 9 joule. Right? When these electrons or one coulomb of charge will be able to carry 9 joules from this point, 9 joules of energy from this point to this point, then you will say it will give you a potential difference of 9 volt. And when there is a potential difference of 9 volt, it will execute a field over this conductor due to which these charge carriers will experience as a force and the movement by execution of this force, by, the, by this external force on these charge carriers, there will be motion of these charge carriers. And in one second, how many charge carriers are traveling will constitute from this point to this point will constitute an current, electric current. So I hope you understand the difference between the potential difference and electric current. Here it is a little demonstration I am showing you that how the voltage and the current varies and how it does not vary and the circuits completed and becomes a proper functionable circuit. See to it here I have attached a bulb. It is a resistor. It is a completely you can say a conductor through which the charges will be able to uh, move through. We will uh, actually read this resistor in the further uh, classes also. Now in the further lectures. Uh, now you can see here also it is a conductor. This is a cell of 9 volt. This is a key or a switch. This is again a conductor. This is an current meter which we usually call as a meter this is a voltage measuring meter that is potential difference measuring meter between the two ends of the uh, known uh, sides of the conductor or you can say the between the two ends of your source and this is called as a voltmeter now when i switch on you can see the charges are moving that is they are moving from the current moves from higher to lower and the free electrons move from lower to higher. Now see, this is the positive end. So the current will move like this and the electrons will move opposite to that of current. Since the 9 volt potential difference is applied here, you can also increase this by adding somewhat, you can say more batteries also. So when you will have an idea that if this there is a 9 volt difference between the two ends of the cell or your source, you can measure the current at each and every point and you will find that it will be 0.5 ampere only and the bulb is started glowing due to the movement of this free charge carriers. So due to potential difference, the movement of free charge carriers starts to uh, take place and the current actually starts. You can see we can have 0.45 here, 0.45 here, it is again 0.45. At every point of the circuit, it is 0.45 ampere only. You can measure at each and every particular point. See to it. Correct? Why? Because the number of charge carriers per unit time is exactly same at each particular point of the electrical circuit. At the same time you can measure the potential difference between uh, either you can say of the cell you can also measure the potential difference between the ends of the bulb. Now see to it if you will combine here it has it is showing 4.50 volts. Why is it so? Because potential is actually this source is the major source of the potential difference. But due to the obstructions that come in the path, the potential difference drops down at each and every state because it is dependent on the length of the conductor being used. Suppose we actually shorten this circuit. Let us suppose. How to do that? 
so I will just uh, remove this part if you say let us suppose I decrease this now you see it becomes 9 volts when I will increase this resistance you can see the resistance here I will increase it when I increase this resistance the potential goes down that means the and the, you can see current also goes down that means the current is actually dependent on the external potential source this is again 9 volt it is not been actually that this is not 9 volt the source remains the same of 9 volt but due to the various obstructions that come in the path of the current in the whole circuit due to the varying length of the wires we can say that the potential at each and every point can reduce and the drop of potential varies from point to point so now we can have a look at this point see no potential is being dropped because we do not consider here as any potential drop these are direct connections right now if you can see here every meter has a resistance you must learn this right now when you will combine and you will see this conducting major conduction takes place through this wire because we are considering this as the conductor and this as the conductor so now it will have a varying potential difference so total potential difference was 9 volt out of which 7.85 is being measured across this conductor and the remaining i suppose 1.15 or something is actually dropped across is actually measured across this bulb so potential difference varies from between two points from point to point in a particular complete circuit but the potential difference of the source remains the same and the potential difference uh, among the source is actually responsible for the motion of charge carriers which will constitute a current through it i hope this is understood